to move toward the cycle bombing. I'm sorry if I'm speaking fast, but this is how I do it. All right, now let's talk about the vitamin B12, which is cycle bombing. Really, really. I mean, I, you know, this vitamin is easy to remember, easy to remember compared to other vitamins because this guy have got cobalt in it. So no vitamin, the whole, all the vitamins, nobody got cobalt in its structure. This guy called psychobalmin. So you can see there's a psycho, he's a psycho. So we have got C-O-C-O. So it's a, it's a cobalt containing, or you can also call the psychobalmin, the vitamin B12. You can also call it the extrinsic factor. So we have got cobalt containing. This guy is a cobalt containing and is actually not present in plants. So that's why I see, look, there are different different things all these vitamins are present in plants but this guy is not is, is not present in plants so this is this thing is what separates him from other vitamins cobalt containing not present in plants and synthesized intestinal flora like it's present in it is synthesized in your intestine or in animal intestine if it also present it's also formed in the chicken uh, chicken intestine so when you're going to uh, eat a chicken so you're going to get up that because it's uh, synthesized by the bacteria present in your intestines or not by the your self intestine there are guys sitting inside uh, your intestine you know bacteria they're going to actually form this vitamin that is psychobalmin all right so absorption i brought there's it's an intrinsic factor so we need intrinsic factor um in our intestine, or in the, especially in the stomach, oh, sorry, in the stomach, we need an intrinsic factor which actually helps in the absorption of psychobalmin. If the intrinsic factor is not present, we're not going to get psychobalmin. One thing I have to make it clear if psychobalmin is not present, we're going to get an anemia, which is called as megaloblastic anemia, anemia. But if intrinsic factor is not present, it is called as pernicious anemia. Look, psychobalmin is in the is, we have got psychobalmin in our intestine, but we are going not going to be we are not going to absorb it because we haven't got intrinsic factor. So if we haven't got intrinsic factor, we are going to get an anemia due to this, which is called pernicious anemia. So whenever it is going to be anybody is going to ask you what is the difference between megaloblastic and pernicious anemia, be really simple. In megaloblastic anemia, we're going to if you if we don't have psychobalmin folic acid or vitamin C, we are going to get a megaloblastic anemia. If we don't have intrinsic factor, we're going to get pernicious anemia. So this intrinsic factor is only concerned with the psychobalmin, not anything else. All right, and it's also I have mentioned it again here. This it's also helps in the conversion of folic acid to the tetrahydrofolate. All right, now let's move towards the fat soluble vitamins. So fat soluble vitamins are easy compared to because this is a totally mess up B1, B2, B3, but this is very easy guy because we have got vitamin A, vitamin K, vitamin E, and vitamin D, that's it. So important vitamins are vitamin A and vitamin D, and I have wrote all the important things regarding these vitamins, and I'm not going to talk any detail about these vitamins. I have already made a detailed lectures on vitamin A. If you if you have seen other lectures, you can find out the lectures regarding vitamin A in detail, all those functions, all right? I'm just going to make a quick review or easy easy boy, easy thing on under, understanding the fat soluble vitamins. So starting from the vitamin A. So vitamin A is actually uh, also called as retinol, which I haven't mentioned. You know, you can name the vitamin A into three names. Vitamin A also called retinol, retinoic acid. I made a lecture on it. You can check that and retinol. All right. And again, we have also, we also call it beta carotene. So beta carotene is actually absorbed from plants. Uh, in the and the, from the, if you're getting the, the vitamin A from plants, it's in the formation of beta carotene. Then then the beta carotene actually broken down, and when it is broken or hydrolyzed, it gives two mole of retinol. All right, let's start with the carotenemia. So in order to understand the carotenemia, I have to give a good description about what uh, why we are coming to the carotenemia. So listen to me. Among the carotenes, actually, the beta carotenes, which I have already talked about them, are the most efficient precursor of vitamin A. So carotenes do not have any vitamin A activity because they are not the biological active form. The biological active form is retinol, uh, retinoic acid, but in some cases retinoic acid is also not uh, that much good. Retinol and reti retinol. Uh, that is an aldehyde and alcohol are actually good active forms of the vitamin A. So the carotenes do not have any vitamin A activity. They are converted to active vitamin under the influence of 
thyroxine, that's it. You have to remember this one. Carotenes, beta-carotenes are converted to the active form, the retinol, you can say, under the influence of thyroxine. So since thyroxine is required for the conversion of carotenes to vitamin A, which is an active form, so in thyroxine deficiency, if you have got hypothyroidism, hypothyroidism, you, you know, carotenes accumulate in your blood, so resulting in a condition known as carotenemia. So carotenemia is means your uh, the uh, blood level of the carotene increases in your blood because it is not going to be converted into the active form. So carotenemia accumulates in your blood. So that condition is called as carot carotenemia. Another function of the vitamin A is actually in visual cycle. It helps uh, in your visual cycle. That means it helps to see you in dark and dim light. You know, it also helps you. I have made a lecture on it. You can see that. It also helps you maintain the epithelium or the your skin. It helps to protect from keratinization. And uh, again, oh, remember one thing more that I have really highlighted over here. That is the no retinoic acid to pregnant women. So what does that mean? You have never, you don't have to give the retinoic acid to a pregnant woman because uh, the retinoic acid is actually uh, is is not that much uh, active form. The retinol is a good one. You should give it her the retinol and the retinoic uh, the retinol, but not the retinoic acid. There's a there's a there's a thing in it because retinoic acid is inactive in maintaining normal reproduction and visual cycle. Remember this one. Retinoic acid is inactive in maintaining normal production and visual cycle. So uh, animals, you know, if any animal is given vitamin A only as retinoic acid, if vitamin A is given as only as retinoic acid from birth, will be blind and is sterile because it's going to uh, do a problem with your production and your visual cycle. And the vitamin A also helps in your gluconeogenesis, formation of glucose from other uh, other compounds. So uh, if if you have a deficiency of vitamin A, you are going to get night blindness because it helps in visual cycle. No vitamin A, night blindness. These are important things. Xerophthalmia is similar. Uh, we have got betots, betot spot, betot spot. So what is betot spot? It's a, it's a kind of a spot in your eye. You know, you can see that the black, black, black thing in your eye. So it's a uh, betot spot is formed. There's xerophthalmia again in the deficiency of vitamin A. Xerosis, a problem with your skin, you know. Now let's talk about the vitamin K, which 